League announced today it will not take part in the upcoming Olympic Games next year. It'll be the first time since 1994 that NHL players will not attend the Winter Olympics. The league also said in a statement, and I quote, we now consider the matter officially closed. <laughs> He's blocking your carry. Sean, Tom, Smitty, okay. Yep. You guys go to the far side, please. Roger. special day uh, for lots of reasons. First and foremost, we get an opportunity to identify with our men's national team and what will be in front of them over the next number of months, uh, but also recognizing where the game is in terms of its growth and development through opportunities that will be presented um, thanks to these gentlemen sitting in front of us here. Uh, this has been about an 18th month process, as you can imagine. Uh, the last three months we've dialed completely into our plan, and our plan is the plan and getting ourselves in a position to um, introduce to you what I would believe to be an outstanding staff uh, to lead the national men's team uh, moving forward. Well, you know, I think there has been rumblings, uh, I think even, you know, as recently as the, the end of the last Olympic Games. And so, um, you know, we've, in the back of our mind, always had a plan. We hired Sean Burke last year with the thought that this could be a reality, and, and Sean, did a great job of, of putting together our teams at the Deutschland Cup and the Spangler Cup. And, and looking back, in retrospect, uh, that was important uh, because we've got a better feel for players. I would say we're not starting from ground zero. We, we have an idea of where we are. Uh, we were able to have Dave King also at those two events and the World Championship to you know, identify kind of how we're going to need to play and to have a look at a little bit of our competition as well. So, I, I, you know, we're prepared and um, obviously as recently as a year ago is when we really started to think this could be a reality. You know, Hockey Canada came to me and we talked about, uh, you know, the Deutschland Cup, the Spengler Cup, possibility at that time that the NHL may not go to the Olympics. Uh, and, you know, it was, it was really good foresight uh, on Hockey Canada's part to start to at least get a book on the guys that are over in Europe. So, for me, that was really the first opportunity to get over and see all the guys, the Canadians that are in Europe and you know, looking back, I'm really glad we did that because we came into this season with at least an idea of a lot of these players. He hasn't signed it, but he could sign between now and when we play. I have him on our I list to watch. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think, you know, that, that could be the waste of a spot. Yeah. Physical presence, can play, you know, all aspects of the game. Perky then, here's to throw, to throw a curve at you then. Can we get him a visa? Coming off the right wing, he has speed, mm -hmm. and he has that ability to hold, drag, make a decommit, and then he's got a great shot. He's a finisher. A couple of years ago, in my opinion, he was the best important guy. I don't know their, I have the phone, I don't know their schedule. Once we realized the NHL wasn't going, um, or we had a pretty good idea, we felt we need to put a full-time coaching staff in place. Uh, it's, it's really difficult to think of building your Olympic team and not having a coach in place all year because he obviously needs to help with the scouting as well, uh, making player decisions. And when we started to interview coaches, you know, Willie just jumped out as a guy that, you know, for a number of reasons would be a good fit with this program. And uh, the, the biggest reason for me is, uh, you know, I think that when you're trying to put a team together that's not going to play together all year, guys got to really buy in. And uh, teams that I watch Willie coach, even if they weren't the most talented teams, uh, they played hard and they and they all uh, competed extremely hard for them. Questions for uh, Willie. Uh, what was it about this job that made it more attractive than maybe another year coaching as an assistant in the NHL? Well, I think whenever you uh, 
represent your country in, in the Olympics, it's pretty special. Uh, I've had an opportunity to work with Hockey Canada in the past, and the one thing you know working with them, they'll give you every everything you need to be successful. And you know, as a coach, that's what you want to you want a chance to do that. And and then I think as well with our with the management team and the and the other coaches here, uh, I certainly felt very comfortable. And um, I just think it's a great opportunity. There's such a chance here, and and uh, my last experience with Hockey Canada was outstanding. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to this one. My question is for uh, Marty Berdur. Marty, uh, talk a little bit about the unpredictability of the Olympics and a tournament. Because when you look at 2006, um, you guys obviously have... uh, when uh, the NHL players are there, you know exactly who the powers are. Now it's going to be a little different. Uh, every team will think that they have a chance to win and you're going to get the best out of them all the time. And uh, so it'll be a challenge. It'll be a challenge, but I think for us, we're in that grouping a team that we think we could win. So it it's, it uh, should be a you know a great uh, a great seven months for everybody to get the, themselves ready for uh, for the Olympics. This team will play five tournaments in seven months in preparation for the Olympic Games in, in South Korea, and we're going to start ten days from now, playing in two KHL tournaments back to back, starting in Sochi, and then moving on to St. Petersburg. We're going to see 45 Canadian players. Uh, we'll use September and October to evaluate players with their club teams. Get together again in November at the Karelia Cup. We'll start November 6th in Zurich with a game against the Swiss and we'll go into Finland and play in Helsinki against five of the top countries in the world. Get back at it again quickly in December at the Channel One Cup in Moscow. Uh, we'll see the same teams there with the exception of uh, the South Koreans who will replace the Swiss. And we'll have one more opportunity at the, the Spangler Cup over Christmas, a traditional tournament in Davos, Switzerland. The last opportunity for us will be starting February the 4th, where we'll gather uh, just outside of Seoul, South Korea. We'll have 10 days to prepare. We're hoping to play a couple of exhibition games there before we open the Winter Olympic Games February the 14th against the Swiss. We're going to put together a team that will, first of all, make Canadians proud, and secondly, give us an opportunity to defend gold from Vancouver and from Seoul. Very special spot that uh, in 2014, obviously, this is the rink that we won the gold medal in. Um, it's nice to be back here to be starting this journey for the 2018 team in the exact rink, uh, exact ice sheet uh, that we, the last time the Olympic team was together, celebrating gold on this ice. So it's, it's definitely really cool to have it uh, starting up here with the place that it ended. That feels good, you know, anytime you get a chance to come together with a group of Canadians after being in Russia for a while, it's, it's kind of nice, you know, I've, I've had a chance to, to play with and against a lot of these guys, so, you know, anytime you get to come together and not be uh, enemies, it's, it's kind of nice. It's great, it's the first step, um, you know, everybody's going to focus on the, the last 10 days of this journey, but uh, we need the first part to be ready for those last 10, so every day is important. We don't have a lot of time together, so every day is important. As we sit here today, we feel we've got a good handle on a lot of you guys, but the door is wide open. And we're starting today to build. Uh, there's, there's six months until February. Um, somebody in here might be an Olympic hero. Somebody in here might score the gold medal winning goal in the Olympics. That, that's an incredible opportunity and a thought when you really sit here today and look at it. And it's six months away. I had a chance to play in two of them, and it was I still think the greatest sporting event in the world. Because you're not just part of a hockey team, you're part of Canada's Olympic team. And you get to go and watch other sports and cheer on the other athletes and they come and watch you. As we start today, and we have to start somewhere, everything's an evaluation. Every time you step on the ice, every practice, every time we do a video session, it's all preparing for six months from now. And we have to keep that in mind because that'll come quickly.
press brings out the best in other teams, and we don't want to disappoint them. So let's give them a good one tonight. So if we get the chance, and they're changing, let's get it up to that wide side quick. Let's get in. Okay, let's be ready to go. Here it goes. It's not the Olympic team yet, but uh, you know, anytime you get a chance to put on that jersey, it's uh, you know, it's a big honor, and uh, you know, the, the feeling you get from it's pretty special. So it's uh, you know, like I said, it's a big honor every time. That's good deception. That's good deception, Stoltz. You know, I was very lucky as a player to play for Dave early in my career, and I, I really credit him for helping me turn into a, you know, an NHL quality player and have a lot of international experience. You know, international hockey is different, and uh, I think you need somebody that not only understands the way we want to play, but can understand the systems the other countries play, some of the uh, nuances of, of, of how those teams approach games, and I don't think there's anybody in hockey that has more international experience than Dave and still has the energy and passion to do it. You jumped up in the rush quite a bit there. I was really impressed. Like, that's not your game. You know, and I'll tell you what they do in Russia. Well, you know, I've coached in a number of leagues and uh, I've coached in the KHL a couple of occasions, so I know a lot about the Russian players and uh, I just always follow every league. I've always been a guy who on my computer follows every league, follow the Canadian players playing in Europe. It's just interested in the game. The big night in there, it's a great night for hockey. Let's go get him. Yeah, I don't think in my 40 years of coaching I've ever seen a August game with that much intensity to it. The pace was terrific. The uh, both teams, when you have those Russian sweater on or Canadian sweater on, it's uh, it's going to be a battle. We got them taking our way like they were rabble. Okay, they were they were off their game. So we got to take that to him again. You, know, you don't know really what to expect when you come over to a tournament in August. I think what that shows um, is, is what we always say, that when you put on that jersey, not only do you get the most out of your own guys, but other teams really look forward to playing Canada, and they raise the level of their play. Uh, so that's a great lesson for our guys in August, early in this process. But it's also great for us as a coaching staff because it's easier to evaluate guys when the game has some intensity and you're playing against a, a, an opponent that really is a rivalry for us. And uh, I think that was just a, an outstanding game at any time of the year, but let alone for August. There are a lot of great watching clips and everything, but it comes down to desperation. Who's going to work harder? Who's going to be more desperate? I thought we did that in the third. So, got some good clips for tonight. Last thing I got is the first five minutes of every period. That's your job to be ready for that. Hey, when we leave here, that's a job in the room to be ready for the first five. First line, line up. Raymond, ready? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. That game was a hard game throughout. Every, every shift was hard. Uh, the game could have gone either way, and uh, uh, we're fortunate to get the win. And you know, but it, it was a tough game. 
if it happens, it happens, right? I mean, at the end of the day, we, we're here representing Team Canada right now, and, and we're working as hard as we can. To potentially say you could be an Olympian one day is, it could be something special. So um, it's a process that we're going through here, at, like each club, and uh, I look forward to hopefully the next opportunity to represent Team Canada and, and see where that could take me. The process of coming in here and trying to evaluate, you guys just made it more difficult. I mean, that's, and that's what we want. We're going to have a lot of tough decisions. Uh, as we move from here, um, you know, the next event uh, in November, we're going to get out, we're going to see players. Uh, we're going to do our best job to make sure that every one of you guys gets the best opportunity to make this team. Because after leaving here, um, you deserve that. I think, you know, the, the last group I thought played the way we wanted, lost the camp through their game. This is another group where, you know, all, whenever the Canadians get together, they're always excited to be together and working, and they've worked hard. I don't know, it's going to be a little bit different for, for a lot of guys here. You know, like, there's about half our team is KHL, but the other half is, uh, is Western Europe, who might not have the experience with KHL like myself. It's supposedly the, the second best league outside of the NHL, so I'm definitely excited. I think a lot of the guys are, too. It's not NHL players, we realize that, but it is the Olympic Games and they are Canadians and there's some great stories. There, there's stories of guys who played in the National Hockey League and, and other guys um, who maybe haven't and, and aren't wholesale names but are really good players and have made a very good career for themselves in Europe. You know, part of what we want to accomplish and one of our objectives is to tell those stories as we move through this process and, and really engage Canadians in and getting behind this group. I think for the first time, probably since before 1998, I'd say we're underdogs. And Canadians aren't used to that, but that's a neat challenge and a great opportunity for our players and for our staff to really build something special that people can get behind and really be proud of what we're able to accomplish there. Craig Woodcroft, to me, he's one of those guys that, again, has a lot of experience, uh, like Dave, in the sense that he's been in Europe, he, he knows the other teams, but his work ethic's outstanding, and I think he just, he fits and rounds out our staff perfectly. I know the pride that goes into putting on the jersey and to go out and represent the country, and it's really no different as a coach. You, you, you get the honour of leading these men, and uh, it's certainly something that we don't take lightly. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun so far. Um, whenever you get a new group of guys, at least for me, um, I haven't met many of the guys, and they've had a chance to meet each other at different events. We're trying to play hard Canadian style, and I think we did a good job of that today. For some guys, it was their first game, and it was a tough game. Like, there's guys that have just come over, haven't, haven't even skated with the team, and come into the game to play. So uh, I thought overall it was good. I thought our power play was good. We got a few in the power play. Uh, Taylor Beck made a couple great shots. Uh, I think you have pull in and that was good. Uh, made some big saves for us. And overall, I think the guys stuck with it. You know, like we had a big penalty kill in the start the third. They had, a, you know, a five on three right then in the second start the third. That was a big kill for us. You know, walks I played with. Um, and you know he was as a player uh, the the prototypical great team player a guy that probably overachieved uh, in a lot of ways and you know i think he can identify with a lot of these players guys that um, you know have ended up in europe who are very good players but their path their career took different uh, you know different sort of paths and yet this is a great opportunity for those guys and uh, for us, Walks is really the guy that will have a lot of the communication with the players day to day. Well, we're game one into this tournament, and you know, we, it, it, same, it's been a great evaluation tonight against Scott. We'll be uh, 
a real fast, hard game for us, so it'll be another chance for our guys to show, but another great evaluation tool for us, and uh, then probably uh, play the day after that and then sit down and probably discuss how we're looking and what kind of team we want to make going forward. We didn't come all this way to sit back and see what they're going to do. We came all this way to show them what we're going to do. Let's go get them. You guys got to find a way to give your best effort. Doesn't matter the third, the, it doesn't matter what's happened. Is you've got to find your way to do your best today. And uh, so, what you need to do, you you got to figure it out. Make sure you bring it to the table. It was a good challenge for us. I thought we uh, we rose uh, rose to the challenge. Our power play was good for us, especially in the third, to really salt it away. And uh, our penalty kill uh, came up really big. You know, that's the kind of stuff you need to win games. And uh, you know, it was good to see guys uh, laying it on the line. Uh, this is really is a tryout camp, so uh, you know, it was great to see. Uh, we got everybody's best tonight. I'll tell you one thing. I had a great time here. I wouldn't trade that for the world. Um, it was fun getting all these guys together. In St. Petersburg, our coaching staff here is unbelievable. And, um, I'm looking forward to definitely getting back together with them again if we get the opportunity. I think we had some objectives when we came here. Uh, obviously, evaluation was the biggest one. And I, I was uh, very happy with uh, a lot of the things that we knew. Um, I, I think this uh, two tournaments sort of verified that. But I think more than anything, we found a lot of things that we need to do going forward. You're going to call Dave, review that list with him, get it down to a few players. And get some opinions from other people in that league. Yeah. You know, we've got to narrow things down. We don't have a lot of time, but uh, we have enough time that uh, we can spend uh, the next couple weeks really going through our lineup and looking at what we need, but also uh, try to put our guys in the right you know, positions and give everybody the best chance to make the team. 